I just want to read an excerpt of the letter that was written by the Secretary General of UDA, Veronica Miner, to the CJ. We therefore call upon you to stop, abandon, desist, refrain, and cease from participating in the activities of the Technical Working Committee. It is worth noting that um, every person has an obligation to respect, uphold, and defend the Constitution. Under Article 3 of the Constitution, you are hence, you, you, you are hence obligated to abide by the dictates of the Constitution, which limits your role to that of an arbiter. Let's listen to what Martha Kome had to say in regards to this. And of course, she also wrote a letter back to UDA, but listen to her. The Service Act gives me the mandate to be the link for the judiciary with other government agencies and other arms of government. It also creates the National Council on the Administration of Justice, whose mandate is to collaborate and coordinate all the actors in the administration of justice to ensure that at the end of the day we render seamless uh, services. So I ask myself, when I come now to meet politicians, what will they say about me? All right, and um, where do I begin? Do I begin with you, Senator Linturi? Because um, there was uh, those two letters that were exchanged between um, the CJ's office and the UDA Secretary General's office, and there were those statements that were made in that rally. I believe it was in Nandi um, when William Ruto was visiting that area. H how deep are these concerns on the involvement of um, CJ Kome? How deep are they as a concern for the party? Uh, you know, just like uh, Mother is saying, uh, oh, no, the, my Secretary in General, we have a, a duty as Kenyans to respect the law and the Constitution. Our main concern is that, uh, and this is just advisory, that uh, looking at uh, the position that CJ owns in this country, and uh, just in the event, because he's uh, very bright, Lindis, intelligent enough, we're only cautioning her to be aware uh, when she's discharging her duties so that just in, in the event there is in the, in the performance of uh, her duties in that particular assignment, there is possible conflict, mm -hmm. then she must always be very careful. Because at the end of the day, if there are any electron disputes, they will end up going uh, to her. So, for avoidance of conflict of interest, when it comes to the discharge of her duties as a judicial officer, she must be very, 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 very careful. And remember, uh, don't forget, uh, you know, I have been a, a member, of, uh, uh, the vice chair of the Legal Affairs Committee, and we used to, to exercise oversight rule on uh, uh, these agencies. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing wrong when it comes to matters to do with the National Council of Administration of Justice because that is where all these agencies that dispense injustice meet and see how to create linkages and how to enhance or fasten the administration of justice in Kenya. But remember, it's all about perceptions. And if we continue that way and they are not keen, they are not careful, and an impression is created that we may not have a judiciary that is independent, that we expect a favor, <clears throat> that we expect results when they are called upon to arbitrate on anything, that can be a recipe for chaos. It is very important. Look at this, what is happening, and why she must be more cautious. You know, there has been clips out there about how the conduct of judges out there. Mm -hmm. To me, if I was even to be told, if I was to be that judicial officer, for the sake of that institution called the judiciary, and to protect it, for it to hand respect, those people must understand that institution must be guarded, must, must be respected, and where but, but, but personal uh, interest. Because the meetings she's been attending, they are meetings with the represent representation from IEBC, the interior CS, Dr. Fred Matiangi, we've also seen <coughs> sometimes uh, the ICT uh, ministry through CS uh, Joe Moshero, the Attorney General, Ki Hara Karaoke, and other senior government officials. And when they meet, they are talking about what each agency needs to do in preparation for the election. What is the problem with 
the agencies that have a responsibility, a constitutional mandate to manage the affairs of a country, what is the problem with them participating in such, such a plan? Depending on the context, I say in our statement of my position is a cautionary. So that where in the performance of our duties or in the performance of our participation in those meetings, there is can see potential conflict of interest in the, in the future as a judicial officer, then she must always be very cautious. Because if she's called upon then to uh, act mm -hmm. or to make, to sit in that court and a matter that is before her as something to do with what she had done in the past, then that conflict of interest will bring a lot of problems. So, Boy, are you as concerned? Because, like I said, all these agencies, they have a stake. They have a responsibility. If it's the Interior Ministry, they have a responsibility to ensure that the polls are um, secure and the, and the candidates are secure. So what is the big problem with CJ sitting there, even if it's perceptional? Actually, the, the big problem is just uh, the UDA. I mean, there's really nothing wrong because if you listen to, the Senator here is, uh, is very guarded when he's speaking, but you had the, his members out there, the mm -hmm. dualists of this world and the Gerard Gays, and, and, and they're really, they're, they're, they're spitting vitriol. They're trying to imply that uh, the CJ has, is part of a scheme to rig the next election. That's exactly what they're trying to tell Kenyans. Because already I think they probably have given up and realized that probably they're not going to win this seat. And let me say this, even if you look at auditors, you know auditors can be called after things have gone wrong. But at the same time, you notice even when auditors work, sometimes they're called in advance so they can plug all the possible holes. This is why the judiciary is involved and needs to be involved in discussing issues to do with elections. Because look at it this way, whenever there's a mistake in elections, they end up at the courts. So it, I think the court is in a good place to be able to advise IBC and the, and, the other, and, the other, and the other organs about the kind of problems that they come to every single time there's an election. What are the things that are brought to us? What mistakes do you make and how can you avoid them? I think clearly it makes sense for the judiciary to be involved through the, the, the CJ. So, but uh, I mean, uh, these people will constantly complain about everything. Anything that is done in this country is wrong. And, and, you know, until the elections are over, they've already pre implied the elections will be rigged. Uh, but I think uh, I want to, to, to issue a caution. I think it's important if people hold such uh, senior positions like a deputy president, for example, and people like uh, Duale, who are actually former majority leader, they need to be very careful the kind of statements they issue because you're sending, it's them who are implying a wrongdoing in advance. It's them who are giving that perception. There's nothing wrong. Kenyans didn't complain. It is them who started complaining. So I think we need to we need to move beyond uh, politicizing every little decision that the government makes and accept that some of these things make sense for the sake of this country. All right, and I'm looking at uh, the statement by Veronica Maina saying that um, uh, they take note that uh, the previous chief justices that came before Martha Kome, talking about David Maraga and uh, Willie Mutunga, they never participated in such a technical working group on elections. But let's listen to what uh, WEPA leader said in regards to Martha Kome's involvement and uh, the conflict that is now coming from the side of UDA. <laughs> wameanza kuingilia huyo mama mpya mpya ambaye anazingatia independence of the judiciary so speaker kagushia um, let me begin with you on this side it, it then appears to be turning to a political contest on whether martha kome the chief justice should be on that panel whether she has a role in preparations for the elections then what you know you know if Mother Kome is helping the politicians to organize themselves and helping them to avoid the pitfalls, then I think I also need a magistrate in my office to help us understand how we should avoid pitfalls that can take us But, but is she helping politicians? She's working with the likes of uh, Fred Matiangi, who are cabinet secretaries, no. Joe Mosheru, <coughs> Kihara Karaoke, the attorney general. But all of them have taken sides. Uh, I mean, so Ma is Mati the Matiangi, problem the people she's working with or herself? You see, the, the, the tragedy we are in is that we have public officers who are, of course, appointed uh, through one side of the divide. And they have all said, like one of them, a public officer said, there's nothing wrong with me taking side. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Kenyan. And, and of course, we thought uh, someone holding a very sensitive office, a security docket in this country, need to be very objective, need to be neutral, need to be an arbiter, need to be someone who is facilitating justice but for I, I everyone. I think you're talking about uh, CS uh, Joe Musheru. 
and it's actually not just yes Joe, Joe just who sort of, have, because mm. that's what I've heard him mm. saying that mm. uh, it's his right is guarded by the Constitution that he can have his preference but which is fine because everyone goes <coughs> to vote, to and vote. You vote for a particular but, person but, yeah but should you take should you take to the political rallies has you he know? been to political rallies? of course yeah. Which Haven't ones? you seen, like the other day, when Raila Odinga was in Nyandarwa, we had uh, Cicely Kariuki, who was she actually... She's not in the, in the working committee. No, the election. but she, she's, she's uh, a cabinet secretary. I mean, you have seen Fred no, Matiani also. What I'm asking also. is, uh, because I want us to be very objective, we're yeah. talking about the technical working committee that is yeah. looking at uh, preparations for the elections. Yeah. And you've seen the chief justice there. Yeah. You've seen representation from IBC. You've yeah. seen a few CSs, if it's Mosheru Matiangi. And these are the people holding those offices. And a person has to hold an office after being appointed by a particular person. That is it. In this case, the president. You know, there, there's nothing wrong uh -huh. with the technical committee. And there's also nothing wrong with these people who hold these positions having to sit to organize and, uh, and arrange uh, the technical bits about the election that is forthcoming. Mm -hmm. What is wrong is their involvement in politics of the day. What is wrong is them taking sides with one political uh, side at the end of the day. What is wrong is by a public servant, a person at the level of a cabinet secretary, or even a PS, coming out to say that, yes, I'm a Kenyan also, and I should be allowed to also go to the political rallies. I should even be allowed to mobilize politically for certain political candidates. You see, when you confess and you profess this publicly, and you make those pronouncements, then it changes the whole game. So what we are asking is that first, these technical committee members, please desist from direct involvement with the politics of the day and conduct your business. If you are in security docket, conduct your security business objectively and without any favor to any side. And don't make public pronouncements that suggest you do not either want a certain candidate or you are propagating the interest of another candidate. Now, that is probably one of the things that would make Mother Kome sitting in this committee already start having the wrong perception. But, but does the and agenda they talk about have, an, have a problem? Do you have a problem with the agenda? Because you, you see, we don't know about the agenda <coughs> which they discuss when they're in the, in, the, in the closed doors. What we normally know is what they talk about when they are out here with us, with the public pronouncements they make. And so long as you're making public pronouncements that show that you are not fair and you're not objective and you're not, uh, you know, you're not uh, looking at both sides equally, at that point in time, Kenyans will definitely see favoritism and they will be very careful about the involvement of the person whom they run to as the arbiter. Now, in this case, so long as one side of the divide has raised concerns, I think uh, Mother Kome is a CJ, a person who is highly respected, a person who has come into this docket, uh, you know, and, and, and people do respect her and they think that she's on the right track, I think what she needs to do is to listen to both sides and where one side raises concerns, I think she cannot ignore that. And the moment you start ignoring that now, it kind of starts now washing away the authority. So who should represent the judiciary? I mean, you have, uh, you, you have the registrar. And in any case, when you're looking at the technical bit, I think you need to allow IBC to actually conduct a lot of uh, this business and then offer them the technical support that is required. And in fact, they are, they're even the ones who are supposed to actually spearhead this. Okay. But when you go to the, when you go to the judiciary, mm -hmm. there are people who are charged to the administrative roles. If I, I know Mother Kome is, such, uh, is also charged with administrative, but also remember, she's also a judge. Okay. The Supreme Court. All right, I, I hear you. She's an administrator and also a judge. Yeah. You so you say. can bring an administrator who is not a judge, who will right. not, at the end of the day, mm. sit in any panel that's supposed to resolve the disputes that arise, even from this te te technical committee. M maybe it's time that um, they come out clean and, uh, I mean, they come and declare what the specifics of the agenda are because it appears that there's a lot of suspicion. But, uh, uh, Fred, uh, where do you place this but you know, argument? Sam, uh, Just hold on, let's you, listen you, to Fred you, first. You see, Sam? Huh? Mm -hmm. I like the way Speaker Kagusha and uh, Senator Venturi have shifted about this matter. You notice they are not able to pinpoint exactly what is the problem with the Lady Justice Martha Kome sitting on that taking committee. But let me tell you, to guarantee the general principle of electoral system, there must be stakeholder engagement, particularly to guarantee free, fair, and credible election, as provided for in Article 81. And therefore, IEBC, as 
a commission that is tasked with ensuring that we go into an election that is verifiable, they must go for stakeholder engagement. Mm -hmm. That stakeholder engagement involved even politicians seated in this room. But in this instance, look at the level of the technical committee that is sitting there, the level of, uh, of an engagement, the cabinet secretary is in charge of ICT, interior, the judiciary. There is nothing wrong. Uh, Lady Justice Martha Kome has not sat in the office of Chebukati Wafula at uh, Anniversary Towers. No. Lady Justice Martha Kome is not going to be the chief returning officer. No. Lady Justice Martha Kome is sit sitting in that committee as a representative of the judiciary, whose docket, in one way or another, will be involved. Because what the yellow fever fellas fear should they lose this election, then they'll run to Lady Justice Martha Koome filing a pe presidential petition. And I agree with um, one of our OCA principals, uh, Honorable Musioka, when he says that probably this is uh, a fear that they are going to lose this election. And we have seen from the previous uh, instances where the opposition were, and were in that situation. Maybe today, the yellow fever are in that situation where they have actually realized that mm -hmm. they are losing this election. But we want to guarantee free, fair, and credible election as stakeholders in this election, politicians involved and the technical committee involved. In fact, I agree with what Lady Jesse Martha Kome has just said. What will they say when now she's required also to engage the politicians and talk to them about this? What will they do? Will they say that now she has left the, the bar and now she's running a political outfit or she's a politician? No. We must be careful mm -hmm. what we want. If you look at the wordings in the letter by my friend Veronica, the wording is that letter, desist, refrain. Those are threatening words. I mean, they are, they are but, very but, but strongly is worded. There, is there merit in the concern that, um, she, yes, she may be the head of the judiciary, but she's also the president of the Supreme Court. And every matter, if it's appealed up to the highest level, it will find her in that court. That's is there true. merit? There is merit. In, uh, in fact, it's not even merit, it's just fear. They fear. But you know what? I don't think the task that uh, Lady Justice Martha Kome is undertaking in that committee is about who will win election, is about who they prefer as the presidential candidate. No, it's about ensuring that in terms of engaging the stakeholder, you know, stakeholder engagement is a principle in this country. Actually, it is a constitutional principle that People must come together and agree on certain aspects before decisions are made. In this case, they're not making a decision on who will be elected. They're making a decision on how to secure the election so that it is seen to be free, fair, and credible. And that must be done. Mm -hmm. But politicians have got those fear. And the merit maybe we'll talk about is, is there something hidden under the table that uh, Lady Justin Martha Koome knows that the yellow fever guys should be fearing about? I don't think so. Who is yellow fever? Some. <laughs> Who are yellow fever guys? We all know that the, no, we don't. the politics. Don't. Okay, if you don't know, politicians are identified with the colors. That's what we're talking about. We know who is yellow. So why yellow fever? We know the because opinion. it is something that has come into this country and people are now fearing their leadership. Fred, we know the parties by name, don't we? Yes, we do. Why don't we just call them by their name? Bec I mean, some. Which party are you talking about? Some. Some. Let me tell you. The issue is not about the party. The issue is about the politicians that have come out strongly to condemn Lady Justice Martha Kome for sitting in the technical committee. What I'm trying to justify here is they are specific politicians from an identity that is yellow. And we know that the UDA has a yellow identity. <laughs> and we know that they have come strongly okay. and they have condemned the Lady Justice. But there's another party that is <laughs> using the color yellow. It's called... But um, even yellow fever is not really a bad devolution, thing. Devolution, <laughs> devolution Empowerment Party <laughs> by Kiraito Murungi. If, even yellow fever is not a bad thing. <laughs> it's not a bad when thing. It, yeah, of course, when it catches you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it spreads very fast. And so I think the yellow fever has actually been spreading okay. very fast in the country. Oh, 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 okay. All right, <laughs> Senator Ninsuri, I want us to exit from this conversation and you had something to raise but also we know that um, like in 2017 one of the biggest concerns for the political parties was the, was the um, stakeholder engagement uh, including the national super alliance then was feeling that uh, there are so many decisions that were made by the commission without their involvement are we getting to a similar situation 
and how would you suggest to move forward so that whatever these agencies are doing that is in, in regards to preparations for elections are also um, involving the stakeholders' interests and uh, aspirations? Uh, I think uh, politicians or these uh, state officers really forget very fast, and that's why we are telling the Chief Justice to be very cautious mm -hmm. in the discharge of our duties. In the, in the <coughs> an nullifying the election of President Uru Kenyatta by the Supreme Court, you remember that uh, that ruling set a precedent where we say the process in any election is as important as the end result. So elections is not about that, it's a process. And uh, the process must be clear, verifiable, uh, accountable. And these are certain standards that have been set. And just like I s we were saying, uh, if the OIND and the intention mm -hmm. is uh, to safeguard the integrity of the election process, then the Chief Justice must be in a position to know that in the whole processes, if there are any disputes, then the disputes will end up in the Supreme Court. And for that matter, and for avoidance of foreseeable conflict, mm -hmm. then the best thing is to delegate that duty okay. to any other officer from, uh, from the judiciary who is an administrator or any bond else, because there is no way the quorum of the Supreme Court will be complete without the Chief Justice. So that, those are the cautionary matter, uh, measures we are trying to take. And I, I very personally and, uh, feel that uh, we cannot condemn the judiciary. We know the judiciary has rogue officers. It is true. It is a fact. And she has a duty to clean up that mess. Mm -hmm. And because she has that duty, let her also not get involved or have her, her hands in the, in the dirt that exists if we really want to trust her because we, we've committed to give her the, the necessary support and to have a dependable judiciary. So it is uh, upon her, it's a duty uh, to make the right decisions uh, with the advice of our team. Mm -hmm. But she shouldn't also be guided by history. Remember when we went, uh, when some of, one of the politicians who is also a serious contender in this election one time okay. told Kenyans that they didn't have confidence with the judiciary what happened. And that's why we are saying now we must, and just like even in any court or any trial, if one of the litigants finds that it's not likely to get injustice before that particular trial magistrate or judge, then and, uh, an application for recusal is made. And if the conscience of that particular judge is clear, in most cases, they will, will get out of the hearings. So even in this case, because of the sensitivity of the matter, okay. and there are many other people that can serve in, that, in those positions, please, Kenyans, have, very, uh, uh, have become very jittery now, and especially when, by the way, I even didn't know the participants or the people that sit in that committee, mm -hmm. even just rendered out, when there are ministers in it who control serious targets like ICT, security, and the issues we had with the Uruma numbers and everything else, no, 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 no. I would have acted differently if I knew. And we have seen them how they are telling Kenyans they have taken positions, and the cabinet ministers are uh, accompanying uh, presidential candidates in the in a public so rallies. So should sit no, in such no, a no, committee no. if at all it's necessary? But you see, what we are saying First is, of all, do you think it's necessary that committee? Committees are not sorry. But you know, you can have other, other independent players okay. or participants. That we are saying. The office of the cabinet secretary is temporary, is appointed for five years. Mm -hmm. Kenyans, Kenyans themselves, so who, who are us, are Kenyans. Who should sit there? What I'm saying, you know, where well, there are people that are not directly involved in politics who can still serve in those committees and who have not taken any partisan positions. Our problem <laughs> is the pronouncements that you make out there okay. and then expect us to be very comfortable with it. I'm, I'm just wondering whether we have uh, those people in this country who are not uh, involved in politics anywhere. <laughs> but anyway. Um, but you know, they're also technocrats. <coughs> they're technocrats in those ministries. By the way. Technocrats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they take instructions who, who, from... Who are the ones who, who do the technical job? You know, the politicians, like the cabinet secretaries, only do policy formulation. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the technical bits... Oh, they, what I'm saying is, is that um, there would still, uh, there would still be issues because the technical people may still take instructions from their bosses, isn't it? I mean, 
they will be doing their technical work and of course you know there's also professional code of conduct and and sometimes as much as you're taking instructions mm -hmm. you're also bound by certain professional code of conduct for uh, where you subscribe to so there are certain things that are also expected All right. uh, you will be and again it's also easier when you're dealing with a technocrat who of course we can put task they know that of course should there be another government that comes into play they will be yeah, answering okay. questions you know, you know okay. some. other than a politician right. who comes and goes and okay, who so. may not be accountable tomorrow you know, that, that makes a whole big difference oh, oh, you know, right, so, yes, some, some, just just a minute on this issue mm -hmm. i think is a is a is a story being created in advance this is a message being sent out in advance that there's going to be a problem in 2022 with the election. Mm -hmm. I mean, because when you talk about technical people, technical people work in ministries under the minister, under the CS. So you cannot say that the person who works in my office, when they go and represent me, they'll do a better job than me. Because I am the one in charge of policy. So basically, if we are talking about provision of security in this country, the right person is, is the head of basically all the dockets of security, because it's not just one docket. So if you send the CS, then we are safe. ICT, which is money the, the, the distribution, the information uh, flow. That is uh, the CS also. There are many organs that do that, but the CS will be the right person. The, the judiciary, there are so many judges, but if you send the chief justice, they can also point out the weaknesses. I think we are just trying to create a mountain out of a molehill in preparation for maybe uh, the, 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 the negative uh, uh, the result we might get in 2022, so that we have set grounds already for the, the whatever, for the, for the petition. Because you, when you start saying somebody will recluse themselves, I mean, already you're starting to point out that just because someone sat in the technical team and gave advice, that therefore then in future they cannot sit over and, 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 and make a proper and fair judgment on the same cases. So I think, I think let's not, let's not, uh, let's not uh, psych Kenyans that there's a big problem. There isn't. There isn't. And the, the issue the, is, the only good when, thing. when you people talk, you're talking clearly about the CSs. But out there, there in the barazas, you're talking about the, 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 the CJ. How come now you're talking about CSs, but outside there they're not talking about the CSs, they're talking about the Chief Justice herself.